the darkness. I stood there at the edge, watching the others jump off one by one by one. Lawyers, doctors, retail salesmen, women, men, children, and their ages mattered not. Flipping off the edge of the world and diving into the dark, I couldn't for the life of me figure out what could be so exciting about jumping off of the edge of forever. A few of them stopped to stare briefly, but no one really wanted to take the time to give me answers. A male stopped briefly to ask me why I was so hesitant to follow the crowd. I explained my fear of the unknown so passively that it was almost like someone else's story to be told. I told the man directly into his lifeless eyes I wasn't scared of the fall. I only feared I was certain to be a sudden stop when I reached the bottom. Undaunted, he only shrugged and said that I would soon change my mind. He patted me on the shoulder before he, too, jumped off the edge. It felt like an eternity passed, and that's when she stopped to talk. She told me everything that I thought I wanted to hear. You know, not everyone who jumps falls, she says. Some of us get to fly. I swear to you, I can see feathers lining the pupils of her azure eyes. If what she said to me was true, she clearly not found the bottom of the abyssal chasm that lay before us both. She started shaking a little, and in a flash of sweat and tears, I could see broken memories begin to crash into the ivory sands that served as the warm and familiar backdrop for all of my life. I watched with an infantile fa fascination as each drop was swallowed whole by what I thought was lifeless soil, and I looked back up at her. Her eyes were full of compassion and unspoiled love. She was flawless, and I wanted to kiss her. As I leaned forward to take her hands into mine, she threw herself backwards and over the edge. I was heartbroken for a while, and then I saw an, elder, an elderly couple walk up to the edge. I looked them over carefully and grinned when I realized that they had been holding hands. The lady of the two seemed to read my thoughts and said only the words, 57 years the day we finally found it. I turned my head a little awkwardly as I tried to understand what she meant. My boy, her husband, whipped. Life isn't about where you're going, it's about the roads traveled along the way. I nodded, fading the truth of how little I actually understood them. All roads, all roads eventually lead to the unknown, the lady spoke, before they had begun to disappear into the infinite darkness. Which left me with an eon of silence to ponder that statement. All roads eventually lead to the unknown, she had said before disappearing into exactly that. I watched thousands of souls scurry around me in the time that passed, each one unaware of what lay ahead of them as they all took the leap forward over the edge. There was a certain poetic beauty to it, having the courage to blindly leap into the darkness, carried by winds like autumn leaves. That's when the final visitor stopped to speak to me. It was a small boy, no more than seven years of age. He spoke to me with an otherworldly wisdom. His eyes suggested that he hadn't been at all happy with circumstance, and he told me of the savagery that he had witnessed and how he needed to be released from the pains of his life. He decided to come here to find the change he needed to be a better and stronger male than any of the monsters that hid in his closet or under his bed. Humbled I was by his courage, and inspired by his strength, to be so young and yet so enlightened had to be both a blessing and a curse. After all, it's a hard life to live if you can understand the tangled webs we mortals weave. He spoke of the happier times. He believed he was owed, and he casually strolled over the edge. Before his last step, he turned to thank me for listening, and giving him that last fragment of hope he needed to see his journey to its abysmal end. Then I watched as he disappeared into the darkness. It was then that I stood up for the first time and felt what felt like aeons. I walked the last few feet to the edge of forever and pondered just what could be there for me. I looked downward and upward and began to feel myself break out in a cold sweat. I watched my own fears flash before my eyes and began to realize how nonsensical they really were. The regret and angst wept out of the pores of my skin like tsunami waves and began to understand what it meant to truly let go. I found myself smiling as I stepped back a few feet and charged at the edge full speed ahead and I did a forward slip over the side. So what happens next? I do not know for sure. I cannot tell you if I'm falling or flying. And that's where the beauty lies, and why I invite you all to take a leap off the edge of forever.